so as the video has self explained that we are now going to discuss the firearms and its mechanics this is very important because a study was carried out in king edward medical university in 2003 to 2008 and it was found out amongst 2578 cases that the firearm was the leading homicidal cause of death whereas the accidents is the number one leading cause but in homicidal deaths the firearm was the leading cause another study was carried out in faisalabad in punjab medical college in 1997 and 2003 and they also found out that more than 45% of homicidal death deaths were caused by firearms so this is a large number and this is because from the childhood the children are acquainted with the usage of firearm toys this is also playing a big role because the society is acquainted with the usage of toys from the childhood so this is very alarming situation so that's why we should understand what type of firearms are what is the mechanics what ammunitions are used and how they produce wounds so by definition simple when i say firearm in simple words we can say an arm which fires an arm which fires but technically speaking it is an instrument or a device which propels a projectile by means of expansive force of the gases generated by the combustion of some explosive substance so there is a gun powder which ignites and a tremendous amount of pressure is produced within the chamber which pushes the projectile forward that is fire arm so a little bit about the history of fire arms that initially they were bows and arrows crossbows simple catapults and huge ballistas that is minjnik which was used for throwing big stones by mohammed bin qasim so this is a type of firearm so it it is said as the firearms came to europe from china and since the invention of the firearms all the efforts has been done to produce it more accurate to cause substantial damage so it should be accurate and cause substantial damage so all the efforts have been made since the invention of various firearms the first firearm which was registered in 1807 in scotland that was percussion type so this percussion that the firing pin striking at the base of the cartridge in the chamber was the first design which was registered in scotland in 1807 so the earliest guns which were used they were front loading the projectile and the gun powder they were loaded from the front then later on the breech loading that the firing mechanism came in the middle and then was the barrel so basic designed means the same that there is is a lock a stock and a barrel three parts having each gun having three parts then came the assault rifle the most modern most sophisticated which we are normally acquainted with and commonly heard the ak47 kalashnikov this was invented by a russian scientist michael kalashnikov in 1974 and the gun is named after his this scientist kalashnikov as 
AK-47 as Kalashnikov. So regarding the type of firearm, they are generally five types. The handguns, the rifles, the shotguns, the submachine sub guns and the machine guns. And the handgun is further subdivided into as single shot, derringers, revolvers, and automatic pistols. Revolvers are where the firing chamber revolves within the firing mechanism. A drum is there in which five to six bullets can be put and the drum revolves and one bullet comes after the other in front of the firing pin. Whereas in pistol, there is a magazine which is loaded from the from below. It is usually placed in the grip of the pistol and five to 10 bullets can be put in that magazine and a spring pushes them up into the firing chamber. This is a single shot, then the ringers and revolver. You can see the drum has been opened up to show the six bullets are in place and this is the drum which rotates and one bullet comes in front of the firing pin after the other. So that is revolver. And this is the pistol. And the magazine is loaded in the grip. Another classification which is important, generally there, all the weapons are classified according to this that the weapon may be rifled. Rifled firearms means that inside of the barrel has been rifled and they can be either long barrel with high velocity rifles and military rifles or short barrel, low velocity. Then the other type is the smooth board. Smooth board where the barrel has not been rifled. I'll just explain what rifling is. So they are smooth board rifle weapons. And in rifled weapon, the bullets are used, whereas in a smooth board weapon, the pellets are used. So on the basis of rifling, we can divide the weapon into smooth board and the rifled weapons. Then the smooth board can be choked or non-choked. This is another mechanism which has been done in the smooth board that they, they reduce the caliber towards the muzzle end. A negligible reduction in the size toward the muzzle end is called choking. And the weapon which are not choked are called non-choked. The long, rifled weapon may be short barrel or the lo long barrel. Diagram on the left side is show, showing the smooth board muzzle, whereas the right side is showing the rifling. You can see the spiral grooves. I'll explain what they are. These are various types of designs, having the three main portions, the action, the grip, and the barrel. These are some other weapons. So now we talk about what rifling firearms are and why they are called rifled. They are called rifled because inside of the bore is rifled. In rifling, it means that the inside of the bore is cut longitudinally with a number of spiral grooves which run parallel to each other but are spirally twisted from chamber to muzzle end. So inside of the bore has been engraved into number of spiral grooves. That is called rifling. The raised portion is called lands and the lower ones are called grooves. So lands and grooves have been engraved into the barrel. So function or the main objective of rifling is that it gives gyroscopic spin to the bullet. So by spinning, 
it will overcome the air resistance. Then this will increase the accuracy and it will prevent wobbling to become the bullet unstable. It helps in to prevent wobbling. So rifling gives gyros gyroscopic stability, make it accurate and prevents wobbling. And when we talk about the bore gauge or caliber of the weapon, rifled weapon, it is the distance between land to land, two opposite lands, that is width. So the raised, it is the distance between two raised lands. It is expressed in one hundredth of an inch or in millimeters. This is a diagram you can see from the muzzle end the spiral lines which have been twisted. The raised portion are the lands and the lower one are the grooves. This is another diagram in which we can better have a better look about the raised and the lower portions, the lands and the grooves. You can see the parallel lines, they are running parallel, but they are spirally twisted from breech end to the muzzle end. That's how it looked like. And this rifling is an important phenomenon regarding the identification of a weapon. You can see the landmarks on the two bullets, they are different. So when we recover a bullet from a particular crime scene and a weapon is recovered, we make practice fire and with the help of comparison microscope, two bullets are compared and each weapon has unique characteristics of engraving on the bullet. So the, each landmark will be identical for each weapon. So it gives identity, identity to, to a weapon like fingerprints of a human being. So this is an important factor regarding identity of the weapon that the marks by the grooves which are engraved on the bullet are specific for that particular weapon. Now the rifle having the long barrel and this is high velocity having 2000 to 3000 feet per second and usually they are assault rifles AK-47 and others. Then the revolver, revolver is a handgun size not more than 10 inches and this in this, there is a drum which rotates in the chamber. And the one bullets come after the other. And normally five to six bullets can be placed in the chamber. And the drawback is that the cartridge after being fired, you have to remove them manually. That is the chamber or the drum rotates. One bullet after the other comes in front of the firing pin, but the bullet case remains in the chamber. It is not ejected out like in pistols. In the pistol, there is a specific phenomena that after firing a bullet, the case is ejected out. Whereas a revolver, in revolvers, it remains in the chamber. You have to manually remove them. Revolvers are low velocity weapon having 600 to 600, 800 feet per second. So this is a diagram picture showing the drum has been opened up. You can see the six bullets in place and it rotates one bullet after the other comes in front of the firing pin. Now the pistols in this there are magazines. They are also the handgun size not larger than the 10, 10 inches and a magazine is in the grip and in this the bullet the cartridge is, is ejected out automatically. There is a magazine which is loaded in the grip and a spring pushes the bullet up into the chamber one after the other and after firing the bullet, the automatically cartridge is ejected out. And the magazine can contain five to 10 bullets at one time and they are vertically loaded. The velocity of the pistol is in bullet in pistols is 1200 feet per second. 
this is pistol and the this is the magazine has been opened up and the you can see the bullets have been loaded up in the magazine now talking about the smooth bored weapon they are called smooth because the barrel has not been rifled it is smooth and it includes the shotgun the muzzle loaders and the musket these are various names and the gauge in smooth bored weapon is very characteristically determined they say that from 1 pound of lead how many balls you can make so each ball having the same size fitting the barrel determine the size of the gauge they can be small pellets they can be larger but they can each ball or pellet should fit the diameter of the um, weapon so th the larger one they contain almost 9 to 12 pellets about the size of 0.3 inches in diameter and this is the most common that you must have listened about 12 bore that means 12 balls have, have been made so they can be larger balls or the smaller balls then the choking is other characteristic for a weapon because it reduces the dispersion choking is a phenomena which reduces the dispersion of the charge so the bore of smooth bored weapon is how much balls you can make from one pound of lead and each ball fitting the barrel now a little bit about the choking the smooth bored weapons are choked that there is slight reduction in the muzzle end the size of the muzzle end from breech end towards the muzzle end there is a slight reduction in the caliber and this dispersion can be prevented with the help of this phenomena so this choking will reduce the dispersion of the charge and they will fly in the air n block for longer distance the reduction is very negligible 0.4 to 0.3 to 0.4 mm and this is called choking the advantages or the functions of choking are that it gives compactness to the charge the charge travel for a longer distance in a compact manner they do not disperse and this is a diagram showing the percentage of choking that with the help of practice firing you can determine that how much the weapon is choked when we say 50% of choking that mean the 50% of the pellets striking the 30 inch circle from 50 yards <clears throat> this is a diagram showing the choking that the breech end is having 18.8 mm and the muzzle end having the 18.4 mm so 0.4 mm is reduction in caliber the end is cylindrical thank you very much